In part one of these videos, we explained how a JPEG is not very useful for trying to sort raw images. Here, we will go a little more in depth and show you several more examples. We'll show you just how much an embedded JPEG or an Adobe generated JPEG can trick you when you're trying to pick one shot out of a series. Let's consider a series of bracketed shots with plus one third EV between consecutive shots. The scene is often considered one with a relatively high dynamic range. A Mediterranean beach, bright white pebbles, small white clouds on a blue sky, and deep green to brown color bushes with well-developed texture sitting close to the pebbles. We will convert these shots to DNG and compare the embedded JPEGs from the RAW and the JPEG created by Adobe DNG Converter, which are the same as the ones created by Lightroom, both with each other and directly with the RAW shot. In addition to the histogram, we will use the RAW over and underexposure statistics, which show the number and the percentage of over and underexposed pixels in each channel and exposure correction. Shot 1860. Embedded JPEG. Red is reaching the right wall, but not climbing it. Green and blue are not reaching the point of clipping saturation in the highlights. And blue is also climbing the left wall, which indicates that there may be a good chance of having no detail in the shadows. So, according to this preview, this shot has the hottest possible exposure. Since the red channel is on the edge of clipping, we get the impression that we can't increase the exposure. We have to choose this shot, and later deal with poor shadows in the blue channel. The Adobe generated JPEG preview. Red is starting to climb the right wall, indicating that the shot is overexposed. The green and blue have not reached clipping in the highlights. Not only blue, but green is also climbing the left wall. So based on this preview, we would assume that we have even less details in the shadows. This shot seems to be over and underexposed simultaneously. Isn't this extremely confusing? Which of these previews should we trust? Should we keep this shot since there is no way we could expose more to the right, according to the embedded JPEG? Or should we look at the previous shot, according to the Adobe generated preview? But will it be possible to recover some details in the shadows? If we look at the raw itself, we see that the raw histogram is far from reaching the right wall, clipping highlights. Looking at the overexposure and underexposure statistics, we see that this shot is heavily underexposed in the red and blue channels, 13% and 12% respectively, and less in the green channel, 3%. Using the exposure correction tool, we can see that this shot is underexposed by somewhere close to two stops, and there is definitely room to increase exposure, making it hotter and more ETTR, to the right. Shot 1861, the embedded JPEG. Red is starting to climb the right wall, meaning that the shot seems overexposed, though green and blue have not reached clipping in the highlights. Blue, and only blue, is climbing the left wall, so we would assume that we have even fewer details in the shadows. Adobe generated JPEG. Everything looks quite similar to the situation with shot number 1860. Raw. The histogram is far from reaching the right wall, clipping highlights. According to the over and underexposure statistics, the shot is underexposed in all of the channels. Red 11%, green 2%, blue 9%. Applied exposure correction indicates that this shot is underexposed approximately by 1 and 2 thirds of an EV. So, those who call based on the camera-generated previews will probably pick shot 1860 or shot 1861, if they prefer dealing with overexposed highlights more than with void shadows. Those who rely on the conversions made by a regular viewer, not fast raw viewer, will be examining those unknown conversions struggling with similar interpretation issues. Those that call in Adobe software, that is, using an Adobe-generated preview, will probably decide that next time they will have to use a lower exposure value and reluctantly choose shot 1860. 
Now, let's skip a few shots and move to file 1865. Embedded JPEG. The shot is terribly overexposed, while Blue is STILL climbing the left wall. Definitely to the trash bin. Adobe generated JPEG. The shot is completely overexposed, though all three channels, red, green, and blue, are climbing the left wall. Does this mean that by increasing the exposure setting while shooting, we managed to worsen the underexposure in the shadows, compared to shot 1860? Strange, but to the trash bin, I guess. Raw. Green has nearly reached the right wall, while red and blue still have some room. Overexposure statistics. 0% across the board. Underexposure statistics. 1% in red. 5 one-hundredths of a percent in green. 1% in blue. A good place to make a note. The scene that seemed to have a wide dynamic range mostly fits into just 8 stops, with just 2% of pixels falling outside of that range. It looks like this shot is quite okay. So we'll mark it with a green label, or give it 4 stars. But let's be brave and look at the raw shot 1866. Green is slightly touching, not climbing, the right wall, while red and blue still have some room. Overexposure statistics. Red, 0%. Green, 4 tenths of 1%. Blue, 0%. Underexposure statistics. Red, half of 1%. Green, Two one hundredths of a percent. Blue, four tenths of a percent. Now, to understand where exactly we have these over and underexposed pixels, we will use over and underexposure indication, pressing the O and U keys consequently. We have a few tiny overexposed spots on some pebbles, and insignificant underexposed zones on some small areas of the bushes that lack details anyway. These problems can easily be solved in a raw converter. So, shot 1866 is obviously a keeper. But you would never have picked this shot, and most definitely would delete it if you were culling using embedded JPEGs or Adobe generated previews, and they are histograms. Instead, you may choose a shot which is nearly two stops underexposed compared to the right one. So that is why we need to see the raw histogram, the raw based over and under exposure statistics and indication when calling raw shots to be able to choose the best shot instead of disregarding it. For this demonstration, we were using the following settings. We turned off hidden and automatic exposure correction. We set manual exposure step size to one third of an EV. And we set underexposure detection limit to 8 EV below the sensor saturation, which is typical for high quality images. We would love to hear your feedback and questions. If you have any topics that you would like us to cover, or questions to answer, please contact us.